Hey there, it's Cass. Sorry for the lack of video uploads lately. For those of you who follow me on other social media, you'll know that I've been working on a lot of really big projects lately, and they just don't really fit well into a video format. So I've been doing YouTube videos a little less while I've been working on them. But I'm so excited to say that the first of those big projects is finally finished and I can show you all now. I've created my very own D&D 5th edition character booklet. The purpose of the booklet is to keep in mind playing the game. A lot of times I notice that my players have trouble keeping track of their notes because they either don't have time to write everything important down or they can't tell what's important. And for the spellcasters in our party, having to stop and look up the definitions of your spells instead of having them at access is a big pain some of the time and breaks the immersion of our games. So this sheet was created to make it so it's not just useful during character creation, but also as a resource and a tool to use in the middle of the heat of the game, in things like combat and role-playing scenarios, so that way you have all of your mechanics right in front of you. If you're interested in purchasing one of the character sheets, they're only two US dollars each, or you can get the full pack of all five colors for 10. The link is going to be in the description below, and if you want, you can read about all the changes that I've made to the typical fifth edition character sheet to try to make it more usable and user friendly. With that said, let's jump into the video. Today's topic is how I go about making my own characters for D&D. So, maybe you're watching this because you're new to D&D and you don't really know where to start, or you're a veteran player looking to get new ideas for new characters. Or maybe you're like me and you're the forever DM stuck in the infinite pain cycle that is making characters for games that don't actually exist and eventually turning them into NPCs because you'll never actually get to play them otherwise. Heh. <sighs> Please love your DMs, guys. But either way, making a D&D character is half of the game, and it's a ton of fun. It can also be kind of complicated, though, depending on how well-versed you are in all the mechanics and lore. Between races, classes, feats, and skills, there's so much you can do with your character. And after all of that, you still need a backstory to make your character who they are. That's mostly what I'm going to be talking about today. I know some people like to build characters purely out of mechanical elements so they can excel whatever their character is trying to do, whether it's damage, being good at a lot of skills, or maybe being an adept illusionist or spellcaster. But when I make my characters, I tend to do just the opposite. When I go about making my characters for a D&D game, I normally start with an idea and then slowly work backwards into what race, class, and fighting styles they fall into. To help explain that, I'll introduce you to the character that I'm drawing today. This is Septus Ardengloom, my Shatterkai Way of the Mercy Monk. For a little background, recently one of my players in my regular D&D group decided that he wanted to start making a small campaign of his own. Which, since I've been DMing for nearly four years straight in my group now, is hugely exciting for me. This is going to be one of my first real chances to play in a regular game as a player that I've had in a while. We've actually played the first session of the game already, and the character I was using after a small amount of time with the party just didn't really seem to fit with the vibe the campaign was giving off. But that's what happens when you're playing a new campaign you don't fully know the themes of yet. And all it took was a quick conversation with the DM and I was rolling up a new character, and putting the old one on the shelf for now. He was still a really cool character, I had designed a tiefling star druid divine soul sorcerer multiclass based on one of my favorite concepts from Chinese mythology. At some point, maybe I'll introduce you all to him too. But now knowing the major themes of the undead in our campaign, along with knowing who our party would be working with throughout it, I decided to make a character that was more based around that. So in the first session of the campaign, our party may have uh, accidentally been tricked by an ancient sorceress to revive a powerful being of the undead and subsequently pissed off the Raven Queen in the process. You know, just girl boss things. For those who don't know, the Raven Queen is like the Meridia of Dungeons and Dragons for anyone familiar with Skyrim. She's a really powerful goddess who hates and rebukes the undead. So when our party didn't pick up on like the very, very obvious omens and warnings and signs she was sending to us when we approached a magically sealed tomb in the middle of the desert on our previous employer's orders, she got kind of upset. Which is fair. <laughs> We really just ignored dozens of ravens on our way there. Ravens which had no business being in the desert. Listen, in our defense, our party never claimed to be the brightest bunch. But after a gruesome fight and our party being knocked entirely unconscious, they were confronted by the Raven Queen, who was, reasonably, pretty pissed. Turns out, she was the one who locked the undead guy away while she was trying to figure out a way of disposing of him. 
and we screwed it all up by letting him out. <laughs> so she offered us a second chance. She saved most of our party from death under the condition that we pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and fix the mess that we caused. Well, all of our party except my character. He decided to stay behind, as it were. You see, my previous character had lost his lover a long time ago, and was trying to find a way to return to him. He was picking up odd adventuring jobs just to try to help people in the meantime. Since his time had come, the Raven Queen understood the request and let him pass on. This was where we left off, and I needed a new character to play as. So I started brainstorming with the DM, and we decided that after the whole fiasco happened that got the party into this mess, the Raven Queen probably wouldn't trust the party to head out on their own to fix all of this. So I decided to make a character that had been working under the Raven Queen for a while, kind of to oversee the whole situation and help them out. With permission from the DM, I did a little bit of research into the Raven Queen, and I learned about Shadar Kai Elves. They're a race of elf completely devoted to the Raven Queen. They even helped her ascend to the godhood she has. She looks upon them with great pity, because in the process of helping her become a god and defeat a great evil, they were cursed. She feels responsible for their fate. I immediately loved the idea of having a Shadar Kai in the party with some kind of tragic backstory. I wouldn't have found out about any of this without the help of my DM, so that's kind of my tip number one when making characters. Always speak to your DM about the campaign. If you aren't already doing one, ask for a session zero where you can sit down with your whole group, talk about the premise of the campaign, and make your characters together. It lets you make a character that has more synergy with the rest of the group, and you can even intertwine your backstories with the rest of the party so you all have a reason to be there. We usually do this, but our first session for this campaign was a little impromptu because I was supposed to be DMing my regular game that day and I was not feeling up to it. So I appreciate the DM for this campaign stepping in so we could still play and have a good time. Now, I usually play pretty heavy spellcasting type characters. It's a running joke in our group that I main the Warlock class like it's going out of style. And I wanted to try something a little bit different. Our party also really desperately needed a healer. My previous character had been the only one in the party who had any kind of healing abilities at all. Now, I don't normally really try to roll fill because I know in our party it doesn't really matter if we have a super balanced team composition. Our games are all very story-based, so we don't really have to worry about our DM killing characters left and right if we don't have a healer around. But I thought it would be cool if the Raven Queen had kept someone around to help keep this ragtag party alive until they completed the job. That's how I normally pick my characters class. I start coming up with a general concept with no class, race, or anything in mind, and then just start narrowing down what would make sense for that concept. So, in this case, I wanted to be a healer, but I also didn't really want to play a spellcasting class because that's what I always do. So I needed a martial healer. That isn't super common in D&D. And then it hit me. The new Tasha's Cauldron of Everything book had just come out when we had started playing this campaign, and I had been itching to play A Way of Mercy Monk. And it just seemed to fit so perfectly. Way of Mercy monks are obviously martial classes because they're monks, but they are able to use their abilities to heal and harm other people. They sort of act like the hand of life and the hand of death at the same time. And the thing that really sold me on this was all Way of Mercy monks all wear a special mask. And I loved the idea of my character wearing this raven skull mask that was pure white like bone to kind of represent his relationship to the Raven Queen. Once I had figured that out, the rest of my backstory fell into place really easily. This is why I like to work with a character concept instead of just classes and races as a series of mechanics and numbers. We already worked out that this character was one of the elves unfortunately cursed by his birthright as a Shadar Kai. The shadow curse that all of these elves were afflicted with causes their souls to constantly be pulled in by the Shadowfell. Should they give in to that pull, their souls are replaced by a monstrous horror that could easily destroy a small village. This curse also caused the elves to feel controlled by a sense of melancholy, encouraging them to give in and be consumed by it. Many Shadar Kai trying to fight off the curse were thrill seekers because of this, doing anything they can to fight it off lest they become something dark and sinister. Sephthys grew up traveling from place to place, leaving once people discovered he was a Shadar Kai elf. He was no stranger to brawls and skirmishes, and people tended to assume he was too dangerous to keep around once they discovered what he was, and they would often try to remove him by force out of fear. After a while, he settled down in a small town for a bit longer than usual while trying to avoid any questions about his heritage. He made some friends and had finally started to think he found his place in the world. And then his friends found out about his curse. They didn't just fear him, but they were also angry with him. How could he hide something so dangerous? 
They assumed he would turn against them, becoming a strange monster like in all the stories about his people. The townsfolk he had grown to love beat him within an inch of his life, leaving him on the edge of town to perish. That's where the Raven Queen found him. She gave him his ability to heal with one hand and harm with the other, bringing him in under her ranks to remove the stain of the undead from this world, feeling pity for all the harm the curse had brought upon him. Septhus spent a few years under her service before being dispatched in the care of the party. All of those years he devoted himself fully to helping the Raven Queen, who was now the only person he trusted. He tells himself that he's there with the party because he is her right-hand man, but he shut himself off after joining her and has no close friends or allies to speak of. I think honestly, she just wants him to try to connect with the party, and maybe he'll have a chance at finding some real friends and experiencing the true kind of joy that might stave off his curse, one that comes from being honest with the people he's close to. After all, we all carry burdens, don't we? This backstory seemed to perfectly line up with the Haunted One background as I was working it out with my DM, so that's what I went with. And with that, all that was left to do was to roll stats and to get into playing. But there you have it, that's how I build my D&D characters. It's a lot of communicating with my DM and also the other party members to figure out how to make something that we'll all enjoy. And when you're lucky enough to have a great party like I do, we usually end up having a load of fun and getting to play with a lot of different really awesome creative concepts. I haven't actually gotten to play a SEP this yet, we're planning on picking up this campaign after the current campaign that we do finishes, and going back and forth between the campaign that SEP this is in and also another campaign that another one of my players really wants to run, so I'm going to finally get some really good opportunities to show you guys what my player characters are like in a more personal sense, which I'm really looking forward to. I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it at least entertaining or maybe even a little bit helpful. Thank you guys for 200 subscribers and I will see you in the next video.